What if I told you there was a simple formula for writing a thrilling battle scene in your fantasy novel? This formula is used by the best fantasy authors in the world to craft riveting and engaging battles. And this formula will also help you figure out if your fight scenes are working or if they are failing. Because as soon as you become aware of this formula, you just can't help but massively improve the way that you write fight scenes. I've built this framework based on my own experience of publishing three fantasy novels and also through working with a ton of different writers one-on-one -on -one in my story coaching program. Simply put, great, fantasy battle scenes should generate excitement for your readers. And the greater the degree of that excitement, the greater the fight. I've come up with the following equation. Excitement equals bracket, action plus stakes plus conflict, end bracket, times concern. Excitement refers to the degree of reader interest you're producing. So a zero is the reader puts the book down and forgets about it and never reads again. 10 is it's 2 a.m. in the morning, your reader has stayed up all night to read your book because they just can't tear themselves away from the pages. Action refers to the physical choreography and sort of physical events happening in the story. Stakes refers to the degree of consequences for the fight. So for example, a battle scene where two friends are just lightly sparring with each other is gonna have much lower stakes than, let's say, a duel that will determine the new queen of this kingdom and the duel will be a fight to the death. That has much higher stakes. And then conflict refers to the degree of opposition between characters. So a fight scene where two random soldiers are just both trying to survive in this battle and they're having to fight each other to do this, that is going to have less conflict, it's going to have less degree of opposition between your characters than let's say a duel to the death between a father and a son. Because in that second scenario there's all these other factors which is heightening this degree of opposition between the characters. Now you'll probably notice with this equation that action, stakes and conflict, they are all in a bracket. And that is done for a very specific reason because it doesn't matter how big your action is, how high the stakes are, or how much conflict you're creating if you can't make readers concerned about the situation. If you have zero concern, then that whole thing multiplies out to zero no matter how big the action is, no matter how big the stakes are, no matter how big the conflict is. So what does concern actually mean? And why is it so pivotal for creating excitement in your battle scenes? Put simply, concern refers to how much you care about this fight. Why is it important for one person to win and the other person to lose, for example. And almost all of the time, when a battle scene fails within a fantasy book, it's because the concern is zero or it's just too low. I mean, like how many movies have we seen where it's just massive CGI explosions and the fate of the world is at stake and everything's blowing up and aliens are coming to eradicate all of humanity, but you just like don't care because there's no actual character to latch onto. So even though the action is really high, even though the stakes are really high, and even though the conflict is really high, you know, it doesn't really matter because the concern is zero and everything multiplies out to zero. On the other hand, there's tons of stories that just have a very small, maybe one-on-one -on -one battle between two different characters, but there feels like so much more tension and stakes and just immersion within that fight scene because you actually care about what's happening. So let's drill down into the concern aspect of the excitement equation because if you can nail that, you can nail your fight scenes and your battle scenes in the fantasy novel you're writing. Broadly speaking, there are two big ways to up the concern factor within the excitement equation. The first one is the character building that you're doing before the fight. So the more that you care about this character coming into the fight scene or the battle sequence, the more you're gonna care about the battle as a whole. And when it comes to actually building that character that you care about and connect with as a reader so that you have that high concern factor within the excitement equation, I think there are four key sub-principles here. The first is to make your character want two things and only allow them to achieve one. I like to call this the Spider-Man rule because pretty much every good Spider-Man movie or story or comic book always forces Spider-Man to choose between being Spider-Man or being Peter Parker. These two forces, these two desires and wants within his life are in opposition to each other. And it generates a tremendous amount of sympathy and connection for this character because we've all had those times in our lives where we wanted to totally opposed things that are tearing us apart. The second principle for developing concern for your character is to make them an underdog. This is something that I was actually chatting about with a story coaching client just yesterday. We were talking about how in the beginning of his story, which is set in this floating Japanese inspired city, it's this really cool fantasy story with this awesome magic system uh, and it follows basically this, this thief character who is recruited to work for the government within this world. And what we identified is that at the beginning of this story, this thief character was a little bit too strong and the forces of opposition were actually too weak and it meant that we didn't have as much sympathy for her as we could have. So instead, one of the things that he's working on now in that story is trying to reduce the power levels of this character in order to make her more of an underdog and to build more sympathy and connection with her 
from the reader's perspective. Reviewing and sort of tightening up your fight scenes is just one of the many extensive personalized processes that we go through in my advanced one-on-one -on -one story coaching program. The philosophy of the program is basically to download everything that I know about writing stories from my head into yours. And I've seen incredible results with the writers I've worked with so far. I'm literally talking like years of progress over the course of several months. You really helped me level up past a ceiling that I didn't even know I was at. I think um, helping me get a deeper understanding of my characters and the way my story needed to progress, I have learned more as a writer in the past two months than I did in two years trying to push myself alone. My story coaching program has actually been fully booked out for the last couple of months, but I am actually having a small number of slots opening up at the moment. So if you're a fantasy writer and you wanna work with me one-on-one -on -one to improve your writing, then you can apply using the link in the description down below. I will warn you that it is a very select program. I really put a ton of my personal time and attention for each of my clients. So I only take on a small handful of people at a time. But if it sounds like something that would be beneficial to your writing and help you level up to that next stage, then go ahead and apply and hopefully we can work together at some point soon. The third principle for developing concern for your character is to give them a core of decency. So I've written books with pretty grim and messed up characters at some times. And even for the darkest of characters, I think it's really valuable to try to find these slight little glimmers of hope or decency for readers to sort of connect to, to latch onto. And an example I really like here is Rorschach in Watchmen. This guy who is sort of a Batman-esque vigilante, goes around breaking people's wrists, throwing hot oil in people's faces, basically just sort of being this ruthless anti-hero throughout a lot of the story. But there is one moment later in the narrative where he's hiding out and he's basically discovered by this sort of mother and her young child happens to be there as well. And as with the reader, you suddenly have this massive amount of fear because you're like, is he gonna kill this mom in front of the kid to keep himself safe? But there is this little glimmer in that moment where he looks at the fear on the kid's face and he remembers himself as a scared little child in a similar situation to that. And he actually spares their lives. That little moment gives Rorschach this core of decency that allows you as a reader to sort of justify all the horrible things that he has done because you realize like deep within this darkness, there is this little glimmer of light. And then the fourth principle for generating that concern for your characters is to show their progression from being flawed to a more evolved state of being. Because quite often it's the adversity and, and the journey that a character goes through as they attempt to become a better version of themselves that really endears us to them, that really makes us feel sympathy and connection to them. So that's one side of how you generate more concern within the excitement equation, but you can actually generate more concern within the actual battle itself. And the key way that you do this is by trying to make it really mean something. So why are these people fighting in your story? What does this represent? Is this just an excuse for you to have some action in the story, in which case it's probably not going to be that entertaining? Or does this actually have like all of this deeper meaning to it and does it really impact the story and how things progress from here? And often that's a really good acid test to ask yourself is, what would happen to my book if I took out this battle? Did anything change? If nothing changed, then that battle needs to be adapted because it's probably not really doing anything there. It's just sort of filling space. So try to seek ways to have this battle mean something more than just trying to put action down on the page and you will increase that concern factor and increase the overall excitement and reader engagement that you're getting. Now, everything we've discussed so far is hugely important when it comes to writing battle scenes in your fantasy book, but there is still something missing that in my mind separates an average sort of fight from an amazing one, and that is the prose. Writing a fight scene within a fantasy book is fundamentally different to creating one within a movie or a TV show, and that is because in a movie or TV show, you don't have to worry about prose. You don't have to worry about the description, the language, the word choice, the grammar. All of those factors are very important within the context of a book. There's four sub principles when it comes to writing propulsive pose in a fantasy battle. And the first is to realize that short sentences do not equal faster pacing. This is such a common misconception that I see writers uh, make all the time. If you actually think about pacing, punctuation plays a very key role in this. So. You just have to look at the difference between a comma and a full stop, a period. When you are reading out a sentence with a comma, you actually pause for a certain amount of time on that comma, but you pause for a longer period of time when you encounter full stops. So what happens if you have a ton of short sentences? You have a ton more full stops, and those full stops are gonna slow down the process of your writing. So don't make the mistake of just thinking that lots of short sentences will make your writing flow faster. It will actually make your writing flow slower. 
Instead, what you wanna be doing is following the second sub principle here, which is to vary your sentence length. There's this really great quote from Gary Provost that perfectly encapsulates why this creates better rhythm and flows readers through your story in a much more effective way. This sentence has five words. Here are five more words. Five word sentences are fine, but several together become monotonous. Listen to what is happening. The writing is getting boring. The sound of it drones. It's like a suck record. The ear demands some variety. Now listen. I vary the sentence length and I create music. Music. The writing sings. It has a pleasant rhythm, a lilt, a harmony. I use short sentences. And I use sentences of medium length. And sometimes when I am certain the reader is rested, I will engage him with a sentence of considerable length. A sentence that burns with energy and builds with all the impetus of a crescendo. The roll of the drums, the crash of the cymbals. Sounds that say, listen to this. It is important. The third sub principle for prose within a fantasy battle is to be really strategic and generous with your paragraph spacing. In the same way that varying your sentence length creates a better rhythm throughout your story, quite often being liberal with your paragraph spacings as well can create a similar effect. If you have these massive long paragraphs, these big chunks of text on a page, that can be quite intimidating for readers and it can often contribute to a feeling of slowness or wordiness with your narrative. If on the other hand you are a bit more frequent with how you are spacing things out, you're creating more white space on the page, there will literally be less words for readers to get through on each page, and they will have the sense of turning the pages a lot quicker. Now obviously you don't want to go overkill with this, but my general rule of thumb that I like to follow is whenever I am exploring a new idea, I try to put it on a new paragraph. And part of that as well is to ensure that the idea gets across to readers. Because if you have a very important sentence that conveys that a character got stabbed, for example, within your fight, but it's sort of buried as sentence number six in a 10 sentence paragraph, there's an extent to which that could be missed by your reader, they could skim over it. If on the other hand, that is the very last sentence of a paragraph, or it's the first sentence of a new paragraph, or maybe it's a new paragraph and it's one line by itself, you can see how that just draws much more emphasis to this key action beat within your fight. And then the last fantasy battle prose tip is sensory immersion. This is something I talked about in last week's video as well, but it really can't be overstated, the importance of engaging all of the senses, particularly within a battle. That is what really makes things feel immersive and visceral, when you can describe not just the sights of what's going around, and not just sounds, because those are often our two most common senses that we describe in stories, but in particular, the smell of you know the blood hanging in the air, or the smoke that is drifting across the battlefield or maybe the smell of guts that have been spilled from a corpse, for example. And then the taste of blood in a mouth after someone was knocked in the head, or the taste of dirt after a character has come to in a trench or something like that. You can see how these details, even though I'm just coming up with them kind of roughly off the top of my head there, they are very immersive and they're very visceral. They kind of transport the reader into that world in a much more effective way. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you might like this one over here. Until next time, keep writing and keep striving.